When you hear the word farming, you probably think of lush green fields. The future of farming looks very different. Using land to grow food crops could soon be a thing of the past. With the human population increasing exponentially and the pressure on land resources growing each day, how do we feed future generations? The answer may lay in vertical farming. Let's take a look at whether these indoor plant factories could be the norm in the next 10 years. First up, these vertical farms are definitely growing in importance. Imagine being able to get fresh strawberries in the dead of winter or exotic tropical fruits grown in your neighborhood. This is exactly what indoor vertical farming makes possible. This farming takes the controlled environment of a modern commercial greenhouse to the literal next level by stacking crops vertically on shelves or tall pillars. The plants are grown completely indoors with LED lights replacing sunshine and there's no need for expensive and potentially harmful pesticides because the farm is bug free. The closed loop water recycling technique keeps water usage at a minimum. But the question is, will these farms be the future of food? And the honest answer is no. They won't be a defining feature of our food security, but they hold the potential to make a strong contribution. We will need more systematic changes and more sustainable traditional agricultural practices along with vertical farming in the very near future. If we are able to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number two of zero hunger, then these plant factories could provide a major helping hand. But the most exciting aspect of this farming technique is that it's still developing and there's so much untapped potential that we stand to make use of. We know that we must move away from outdated agricultural practices and engage in more sustainable and ethical methods of growing food, and for that, we must look towards new tech to provide the solution, fill gaps in production, and build better systems. But how does it work? Vertical farming is exactly what it says it is. Instead of flat surfaces, it's vertical surfaces and stacked layers. These farms are often integrated into buildings, warehouses, shipping containers, and greenhouses, or just about any space that otherwise wouldn't be fit for growing food. But it's more than stacking plants on top of each other and just letting things happen. The technique requires controlled temperature, light, and humidity depending on what kind of plants are being grown. It's a complicated, balanced environment, and if it isn't just right, then you could end up losing the whole crop in the same way that you'd lose a regular farm in a flood or a drought. These towering farms use LED lights instead of sunshine. They're watered with drip systems or a fine water mist, which is actually quite efficient. It only uses a small fraction of the water that a normal farm would require. And the best part of it is that this mix of heat, light, water, and nutrients can be tailor-made for each specific plant's needs. This usually delivers a high yield harvest around the year. It does seem almost too good to be true. Without a doubt, we are going to see an increased number of vertical farms in the near future, simply because they offer a relatively easy solution to the scarcity of land and water that's looming. Because it's not dependent on the water, we can achieve consistent year-round crop production. This is especially important given the kind of floods and droughts the world has been experiencing due to global warming. They are also super efficient in terms of space. One acre of the vertical farm is equal to about 10 to 20 acres of soil-based farms. This is of course dependent on the type of crop that's being grown. Fewer resources are wasted on these indoor farms because it's a controlled environment. Infestations and diseases can be eliminated, so there's no need for expensive pesticides. Some farms also use the hydroponic technique, which allows for water to be recycled and there's barely any water wasted. This technique can also drastically reduce food miles. Crops can be grown closer to home. This reduces transport costs, carbon emissions, and the need for refrigerated storage. This also means that we get fresher produce as consumers. Being mostly automated means that much fewer people are needed to man the farms. This further lowers costs and makes for cheaper food. The fact that it frees up land also means that it's a great way to boost biodiversity. It does not cause a land surface disturbance, helping the natural animal population which lives in and around farms to thrive. We could also reduce deforestation. Many countries clear forests to grow food for their growing populations. But is there a downside to it? While it's got all these things going for it, there are still some aspects to it that keep the technique from gaining momentum just yet. The initial cost of setting up a vertical farm can be quite expensive. From finding the right facilities to figuring out which crops will work and sell, urban spaces are quite pricey. LED lights, water systems, and computers all add up too. So far, only a limited amount of crops can be grown this way. Grains can't be grown on vertical farms, which is what primarily feeds people around the world. They're good at growing leafy greens and herbs, which barely contribute to the elimination of world hunger. 100 grams of lettuce contains only 15 calories. 
This means that crops grown on vertical farms have a very low caloric density and account for a small portion of daily calorie intake, proving that in the current state of cultivation, vertical farming can't possibly meet all the nutritional needs of an adult human. When we replace sunlight with artificial lights, this means that a considerable amount of energy is going into the system as well. In some cases, the lights are on for up to 24 hours a day, and there's really no way around it. This creates a considerable carbon footprint. Unless vertical farmers start employing solar power, which is not the case just yet. But perhaps the biggest impediment to the spread of vertical farms is the lack of relevant knowledge and skills. It may sound like a simple solution, but it really requires advanced technology and horticulture skills. Automation and software engineers, horticulturalists and biologists, as well as maintenance engineers, are needed to make sure that everything works just right. There's also very little open source material online to help people learn these new skills. Lots of vertical farming conferences happen every year, but they're limited to existing industry insiders. This is probably to do with the fact that it's still a relatively new concept. It was only introduced in 1999. There's a lingering lack of knowledge. Trained professionals gain most of their skills through information and technologies of outdoor farming. This creates a knowledge gap regarding newer techniques like vertical farming. The whole system is highly reliant on technology, and while that may be more controllable than Mother Nature, it can still suffer from malfunctioning glitches. A power outage could be fatal for the core. Irrigation pumps being out of order will also mean that plants dry out really quickly. Remember, there's no soil for them to get water from. Despite all these factors, there are still lots of countries that are looking to vertical farming as the future. And lastly, let's take a look at some startups that are leading the future of vertical farming. Aero Farms in New Jersey has developed its very own aeroponic growing system that doesn't need soil or sun. They've already proven to use half the usual water consumption. It's about 400 times more land efficient and delivers 30 crops per season. Their produce even tastes better. On the other side of the Atlantic, Harvest London is a pesticide-free vertical farm. They use renewable energy to grow herbs and specialized ingredients. Around the year, the startup specializes in products that are difficult to source in the UK and would normally be imported. Like Thai basil, this gives consumers fresh produce at a fraction of the cost. Further east, Madar Farms in the UAE uses hydroponic systems for its vertical farms. Such farms could be particularly useful in dry, arid regions like the Middle East. In a highly controlled and enclosed environment, they are able to produce leafy greens like arugula, purple shiso, and lots of microgreens too. And the Iron Ox is possibly the only vertical farm to be run almost completely by robots. They have two robotic systems. A wheeled robot moves pallets of seeds around the warehouse and another robotic arm picks up individual plants and moves them from each pallet. They also use a hydroponic growing system which consumes 90% less water than traditional farming while growing 30 times the amount of crops per acre of land. We definitely see more and more vertical farm startups crop up around the world. And while they may not be able to save the world right away, they're definitely a step in the right direction as they take the pressure of scarce resources and possibly even lower carbon emissions. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the vertical farming trend will grow in the near future? And is the solution to food sustainability? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.